Welcome, welcome, welcome to AF Fire. I am so excited to get our three day workshop started. This is going to be such an incredible experience. And you are here for a bigger reason. You are here for a bigger purpose. And that is what we're going to be focusing on over the next three days. Now, sober curiosity is trending, right? In 2024, it was reported that 44% of Americans were considering doing dry January. Now, I'm not sure how many actually did dry January, but it is becoming so much more popular and normal to reevaluate the role of alcohol in your life, to take breaks from alcohol, to go alcohol free, to drink a lot less. It is really something that has taken on in the alcohol free movement. And no matter what reason why you're here, no matter what reason why you've been reevaluating the role of alcohol in your life, whether you want to be healthier, whether you want to focus on your bigger goals and dreams, whether you're sick and tired of feeling sick and tired, it doesn't matter the reason, right? We all have our little reasons. But I'm going to argue today that actually the bigger reason why you're actually here is to activate your purpose. And that reevaluating the role of alcohol in your life has been leading you on this journey to activate your deeper purpose. And so today for AF Fire, day one, we are going to talk about why that's so important, what special gifts you have, how you can ask yourself questions about what's next for you in this chapter in your life. Because when alcohol plays a big role in our lives or just even a normal role in our lives, it's hard to sometimes even know what we really want to do. It completely blocks us to our intuition. And so when you get to remove it for a period, you get to finally see what you really want, who you really want to be, what you really want to have in this lifetime. So before we go deeper, I want to make sure we know each other in case this is your first time meeting me. My name is Karolina Zhotkowolska, and I ditched alcohol six years ago, over six years ago now during dry January. And, you know, it was so interesting because I would drink quite a lot in college and grad school. I was a heavy, heavy partier back then. But as I got older, I got more into health and mindfulness as I got into my mid to late 20s. And so what I would do is I would compartmentalize drinking. I would drink uh, only on the weekend and I would drink, you know, Monday through Thursday was pretty healthy for me. I would do my, you know, yoga classes, eat my vegetables, but then every single weekend alcohol was involved. Whether it was going out with friends or a networking event or just having some wine at home, no matter what, every single weekend alcohol was involved. And the thing that happened on Monday mornings was I woke up feeling obviously exhausted. I woke up feeling ashamed. I woke up feeling like I just, you know, erased all the progress I made in my healthy lifestyle over the weekend. But more importantly, I started to hear this voice. This little voice started telling me, Carolina, you are made for more. You are made for more than this cycle. And you see, I had been living this cycle for years. For years and years and years and years and years, I had been living this cycle of being good during the week and over drinking on the weekend. And every Monday morning, I heard that voice, Carolina, you are made for more. You are made for more. And part of me believed that voice, but the other part of me just ignored it. And there's so many dreams I had as a little girl that I'd completely given up on as an adult. I knew I wanted to write books when I was a little girl. I wanted to do something meaningful that had an impact in the world. I wanted to live a freedom lifestyle and be able to travel and see the world. And here I found myself at the age of 30, waking up and going to a cubicle and drinking too much on the weekends, right? It was not the dreams I used to have as a little girl. And I can now see that as I started dry January and I had a 30 day break from alcohol, I started to rediscover myself. I started to get to know myself in a brand new way and really understand what brings me joy versus the artificial high you get from alcohol and really get to know what I find pleasure in and really kind of peel back the layers of my self-healing, my self-love and my self-esteem. And as I went and moved on, I actually drank again in February because I didn't really believe that a normal adult was allowed to not drink alcohol. And that contrast I had in February really opened my eyes. It really showed me that one, you know, even one or two drinks would ruin my sleep, make me feel super groggy, make me feel even cranky in the moment. But then I also recognized how I was just going back to that same pattern I had before of playing small. 
right? And that's what alcohol ultimately was for me. It was a way to play small. I was not grabbing my pen and writing the next great American novel when alcohol was in the picture. And so I, what I decided is in February, I decided of that year to take another break from alcohol. And what ended up happening was so incredible. Not only did my physical health improve and just get more energy and more motivation and just started feeling way more better in my body and my sleep, I also discovered that my emotional health started to really improve. My mood changed, my neurochemicals from alcohol actually rebalanced and I started feeling happier and happier with just the mundane moments. I started recognizing how much more self-love and self-esteem I was building as every single day I was showing up for myself and every single morning I was waking up feeling love from the past version of myself. You know when you have a drink the night before and you, you wake up the next day and you're like, why did I do that to myself? Why, you know? Because our body obviously feels it. Every single day I felt that self-love and that respect of, oh my God, I'm actually showing up for myself. Every day I started feeling confidence as well because I was actually like nailing my Achilles heel. You know, I tried to drink less for so long and finally I was actually overcoming my Achilles heel and three weeks alcohol free, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks alcohol free. It was like I was superwoman. Like what else could I do if I could do this? And my courage started to grow as well. My courage in the sense that when you go alcohol free in a world that demands you drink, you really build your courage muscle. You really learn to stand on your own two feet and align your life to your deeper values and your bigger dreams, not what everybody else is doing, right? And you take all of those gifts I got, all of this courage, intuition, all of this energy, all of this motivation, and you wrap it up into like a little sack or a little backpack. And it turns out that I had every single gift I needed to achieve my bigger dreams. Now, if you're in the earlier phases of reevaluating alcohol, if you haven't taken a break yet, I highly recommend you check out my book. It's called Euphoric Ditch Alcohol and Gain a Happier, More Confident You. You can get it on Amazon, you get it at the bookstore, you could get it in the library. Get this book so that you can start to really take a life-changing break yourself with the proper mindset work that's actually going to make your desires for alcohol go away. Now, if you've already been taking a break from alcohol, this is the perfect place to be because we're going to dive deeper into why the universe has actually orchestrated this for you so that you could activate and unleash your deeper purpose. Now, the thing is, is that when you look statistically at how people drink alcohol, most people who regularly drink alcohol, at least every week, most people who regularly drink alcohol overdrink. They drink above the health guidelines. Now, the health guidelines are pretty low and they're actually getting lower and lower as more scientific studies are showing that there's actually no safe amount of alcohol. So when we're talking about who's over drinking, we're talking actually about most drinkers, right? Now, but most drinkers don't reevaluate the role of alcohol in their lives. Most drinkers keep doing the habit for the rest of their lives until they die. Most drinkers will not have to the courage to listen to their intuition to try a new way. But that isn't you, right? That isn't you. You listen to that intuition. You listen to that voice that you heard that I am made for more. And you arrived here. And I know in my heart, it is because this journey that you've been on, it's as like the universe has tapped you on the shoulder and said, hey, beautiful, it's time to let go of this beverage that no longer serves you because we have big, beautiful things to do on this planet. We have a special purpose that we are meant to unleash. And in that way, I think it's the women and the men who actually reevaluate the role of alcohol in their lives are the most intuitive, the most brave, the most wisest people on the entire planet. And that is why I know you have such a big role to play, such a big purpose to unleash. Every single one of us has a purpose. It is why we came to this planet. We literally have a vision and a mission for what our life is meant to accomplish here on this planet. But we go through a period of forgetfulness, right? We don't wake up knowing our mission and our purpose at 15 years old or, you know, only the lucky ones do. And we go through a period of forgetfulness. We get into the habit of daily life. We have to get jobs to pay the bills. We just go through the motions and we stack the habits and the routine and the routine. And slowly but surely, you add alcohol to that mix and you disconnect with yourself and your deeper purpose. You disconnect from the reasons why you came to this planet. So think of this workshop as your three-day reminder on what that beautiful purpose is. We're going to dive really deep into these questions, how to overcome some of the beliefs and the fears that you might have about going after your deeper purpose, and some examples I'll share in my own life about 
how to achieve some really common goals. Now, when I went alcohol free, like I mentioned, I got all of these beautiful gifts. I got the gift of confidence. I got the gift of courage. I got the gift of energy. I got the gift of motivation and drive and intuition and creativity and learning how to stand on my own two feet and learning how to put up boundaries and let go of people pleasing. So many gifts came to me and that come to every single person who engages in the work of changing their relationship with alcohol. Those gifts are not just for you, just for this moment in regards to changing your relationship with alcohol. Those gifts were given for you to actually be able to have everything you need inside of you to achieve your bigger purpose. And I really do believe that when you are the one who's here, you are the one who's reevaluated alcohol, you're the one who's been taking breaks or going alcohol free, you is actually a sign that you have a big, beautiful purpose to unleash onto this planet, that you are made here to make a meaningful difference, to do things that fulfill you and to change lives along the way. And the way that looks like can look really different person to person. It could be formally, it could be informally, it could be a passion project, it could be your career, right? It doesn't actually matter the format. What matters is that you know in your heart that when you get to age 90, you're not going to look back at your life and regret all the things you didn't do. You are going to be fulfilled at the bravery and the courage you showed throughout your lifetime to leave your comfort zone behind and actually go do the things you've always wanted to do. And if you're not sure about what those things are, you're in the perfect place because we're going to do some incredible exercises today for you to discover that. Now, I know you have a special gift to share. I know that you have something so beautiful to offer or otherwise you wouldn't be here and you wouldn't have reevaluated the role of alcohol in your life. And if you think to yourself, yeah, but what I want to do isn't that unique. A lot of other people are doing it. I just want you to recognize that there has never been anyone like you on this planet before. You are literally the only person who has the exact same set of skills, interests, passions, uh, life experience. You are the only person who has all of those things together. You are the only person who has the exact same passions, interests, life experience, skills, talents, you know, the time and era that you were born. Anything you create will be uniquely yours and uniquely you that is completely different from what anyone else could create, right? You have that special gift to share. And maybe, sometimes maybe, we do get a hint of it in childhood. Sometimes we know that we want to write a book in childhood. Sometimes we know that we want to be a creative person in childhood, right? Sometimes it's a little easier to tap into our beautiful gifts when we're kids, when we don't have so many boxes and rules to tell us what we should do for the rest of our lives. Because basically, by the time you turn 18, all of that needs to go outside, you know, out the window, and it's time to only focus on what's practical. It's time to only focus on what is going to get you, uh, you know, a good standing on your resume and going to pay you a nice salary and what's going to look good on paper and what's going to make your parents proud or make other people in society, you know, esteem you. We let go of our beautiful, beautiful creative pursuits and goals and dreams to be realistic. And in that way, we also slowly kill the fire inside of us because we're no longer tapped into that deeper passion, into that deeper purpose. So think of these next three days as tapping back into that reigniting your A of fire and what your beautiful gift is meant to be in the world. Now, the way I see it with my relationship with alcohol, I used to be in the audience. I used to be on the sidelines. I used to be watching my life from the side and not be the star in my life. You know what I mean? If you're going to be watching a show, there's the like dancers, singers, there's the actors on stage, and then there's all the people just watching it on the side. That's how I used to treat my own life. I was on the sidelines of my own life. I didn't go out and do the big, beautiful things that main characters do. I didn't believe in myself enough to actually take action and get on stage and do the brave, beautiful, big thing. I was on the side, and guess what? On the side, I was really skeptical, I was super judgmental, and I was super envious of other people. I was like a night and day difference of myself. I actually was not as like generous and just kind-hearted back then as I believe I am now because of how envious and judgmental I used to be of other people who were the stars of their own lives, right? And how easily does alcohol marry into that equation? 
You know, like I had these dreams of being a writer when I was a little girl and I would write. I, as a little girl, used to write poems. I would write short stories. I even wrote plays that I would put on. I even started little novel ideas. Like I was actually a really prolific writer when I was a little girl. And guess what happens? I go to college and my writing just dries up. I get the worst writer's block. I cannot write anymore. I don't even journal anymore. I just can't tap into my intuition. I can't tap into my creativity anymore. I can't tap into my deeper emotions. And so, you know, this this goes on. This goes on for a long time because I continue drinking for, you know, much longer. And every single time I try to write, I can't. And it was really sad because I never lost the dream of wanting to write a book. And so every, every New Year's, I would have a New Year's resolution that today or this year is the year I finally write a book, that I finally, you know, get that started. And I would make a New Year's resolution that, you know, every week I'm going to write for 30 minutes and I would do it the first week in January and then never again. And as long as alcohol played a big role in my life or even on the side in the weekend, Writing was not something that came to me whatsoever. I had no discipline, I had no creativity, and I had no intuitive ability to really go deep with emotions. You know, think about it. A writer has to have a lot of emotional intelligence to be able to write their characters or write what they're supposed to write. And every weekend, here I was blocking my emotions, literally leading to less emotional intelligence and less ability to feel the depth of my emotions. Alcohol literally is a depressant that numbs us from feeling the depth of our emotions, right? And so how could I possibly think that I could create something because I was completely blocking the very thing that enhances and is even the birthplace of all creativity. Now, just as a side, I forgot to mention some logistics of this challenge that I'd love to sneak in right here. So what we're doing is we're going to go for three days. And today we're talking about how to activate your deeper purpose. Tomorrow, I can't wait to tell you how to banish the beliefs that tell you that you're not good enough, that help you, that make you feel embarrassed that you're not drinking. And some of uh, this incredible, incredible, uh, PhD doctor, Dr. Bruce Lipton, I just saw him this weekend. He's a cell biologist. And, you know, the way that our consciousness affects our reality is so grounded in science. I cannot wait to share all of his discoveries with you tomorrow. And then on Friday, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to share exactly how I got a six-figure book deal. I'm going to share with you exactly how I was able to quit my job with my husband and go travel the world and do something that is so fulfilling and meaningful on my heart so that you have examples to follow too. On Thursday, be sure to come back because that is when you're going to unlock your How to Attract Wealth Masterclass. So you're going to be attract, you're going to be unlocking that. I'm going to give you guys the link on Thursday. So be sure to come back on Thursday so you can get that free class for you, which is normally like a $300 class. Okay, and then one more logistic. We have some incredible giveaways for you. So our first place giveaway is a free scholarship to become emboldened. This is for newly alcohol-free women to unleash their deeper purpose and manifest their dream. Think of it as an incubator that allows you to actually work on your goal, discover what that goal is, and then have four months together to literally get my support and all the personal development work you need in order to go after that big dream and goal. We have masterclasses in there about how to launch a book, how to write, launch a podcast, how to launch a business, how to attract more wealth. Like it's all in there for you. Plus we get all these incredible guest speakers in, you know, how to to banish imposter syndrome, how to, you know, uh, travel or reevaluate a career, how to manifest your dream life. It's all in there. We're incubating together your big goal, big dream. So first place is a free scholarship to become emboldened plus a 60 minute one-on-one -on -one call with me. Now, I usually only do six-month packages for my coaching, and it's about $7,000. So to have this one 60-minute call with me, I usually never offer it, and I'd love to help you achieve your bigger goal and dream and work through any blocks that might be sitting in the way. That's first place. Second place is going to be a $500 off discount off Become Emboldened plus an eight pack of these beautiful wild AF elegant alcohol free wines. These are so gorgeous. They come in a sleek can. They have no added sugar and they're just seriously so like on par like they are chef's kiss. And then third place is a 12 pack of Curious Elixirs. Curious Elixirs has the most high end mocktails. They have all these incredible flavor combinations and you're going to get a variety pack so you can try every single one, right? So those are the prizes. And the way that you enter to win is by watching this live, by engaging and sharing comments in the comment box, 
by answering the homework questions in the Facebook group. Just the more that you engage, the more entries that you're getting to win the giveaway. So comment away, you know, say hello, say where you're from, say, you know, amen, say I love it, answer the questions, tell me about you. I love this because we get to do actual virtual coaching within this three-day space. I get to learn more about you and your story and we actually get to do some coaching together. So be sure to engage as much as possible so that you can be entered to win those incredible prizes. Okay, so going back, I was telling you the story about how I always wanted to be a writer and how I literally could not write at all when alcohol was in my life. And so at the time, the last year I remember I was drinking alcohol still, I was in such despair. I literally completely gave up on my goal of ever writing a book. I was, remember I was telling my sister-in-law at a Christmas party that like the one wish I have for my life would be to write a book. And I didn't say it very hopefully. I was literally saying it like pleading with the universe. Like, I know it's never gonna happen for me, but please, if I could just please write a book, right? It was sad. I had completely given up any hope that would ever happen for me. And then what happens? The next year, I decided to take a break from alcohol, which turned into, you know, six years later. And my writing comes back with a flourish. I'm able to tap in exactly into my intuition. I'm writing and journaling like crazy. In one afternoon at the beach in Hawaii, my very first alcohol-free vacation, the word euphoric in a, at a sunset just comes to me. Euphoric is the name of my book. Euphoric is the name of my company. Euphoric is the name of everything, right? It just comes to me. I never even really used that word before, right? The next week after that, every single chapter in my book comes to me in a download. From someone who had writer's block for over 13 years, every single chapter just came to me in a download. Now this book took a while to write. I had to get a book you know, proposal outwritten. I had to get a book deal. I had to get an agent. I had to get a publisher. So four years later is when the book actually came out. But it's so beautiful to me that the whole genesis, the whole conception of it actually came to me within a few months of being alcohol free after years of writer's block. And so this is how I know, and there's so many other goals and dreams that I had just paused, that I just completely given up on. You know, there was another dream that I always like kind of was interested in entrepreneurship, but I didn't even go there with that. Like with writing, at least I, I accepted to myself that I wanted to be a writer. Entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, I was like, hell no, there's nothing about me that spells entrepreneur. I am, you know, grew up shy. I'm an introvert. I'm also foreign. You see my last name, Jodka Volska. Like I grew up in an immigrant family. Nothing about me spells entrepreneur. I thought entrepreneurs were these like rich, well-connected white guys who li lived in the Silicon Valley and they're best friends with techies and they knew all the angel investors. Like I just, nothing about me spelled entrepreneur. So I didn't even have the belief system to even consider it because I completely closed that idea off for myself. And so when I go alcohol free, I'm starting to regenerate my confidence. I'm starting to regenerate my self-esteem. I'm starting to regenerate my self-love and I'm starting to smash every single belief I had about why alcohol was a benefit or a pleasure or a comfort for my life. And if you haven't done that deeper belief work, I really recommend it because you can completely remove your desire to drink alcohol when you excavate every single belief. And that is a program that I do called Become Euphoric, not to be confused with Become Emboldened, which really helps you with the baseline removing your desires for alcohol. I really highly recommend it because you could literally be free and not even think about it by really doing this deeper subconscious work. So I did all of that. And once I started changing all my beliefs around alcohol, I started recognizing, wait, I can change my beliefs about anything. Right? I can change my beliefs about whether or not I think I can be an entrepreneur. I can change my beliefs about whether I think I can write this book. I can change my beliefs about all the self-doubt and so all the fear and all of the imposter syndrome I was feeling. And so I started to do that. And what ended up happening was that my wildest dreams came true. I started going and taking action on the things that I wanted and I wrote this book and I became the author I've always wanted to be. And I launched this business and became the entrepreneur I always wanted to be. And I started helping people all around the world and getting a sense of deep impact that my work actually matters. I used to work at a university in a cubicle and you know my job was never bad. It was actually a fine job, but I never felt that level of impact. I never really felt like I was actually making a difference in the grander scheme of things, right? And when I started this business, Euphoric, I actually felt that deep level of fulfillment and impact on in the daily. 
I also really value freedom. And so for me, I'm a traveler. If you're not following me on Instagram, go check it out. I'd actually love to hear from you. If you're watching this live, if you're catching the replay, send me a fire emoji, okay? Send me a fire emoji at euphoric.af and I would love to chat with you and get to know you better in your goals and dreams. It's gonna be like free virtual coaching that you can get if you do the, you know, the emoji. We can just chat, you know, whatever you wanna share, but send me that fire emoji at euphoric.af. But anyway, if you check out my Instagram, you know, I travel a lot. It's all in the background of my life. I'm obsessed with it. Like traveling is just something I am here for, right? And I didn't used to be able to travel very much because I had a full-time job with only two weeks off and my husband had even less time off. You know, so when I started my business, I actually started to find an avenue to like, this is how I get the freedom lifestyle. This is how I get the autonomy and the freedom to be able to have, you know, time control. I get to work when I want. I get to work where I want. I get to, you know, there's no ceiling here. And so in that first year, I literally, I wrote my book. I launched a business. I launched a podcast. I ran a half marathon. So many things I never thought were possible for me happened within the first year of dishing alcohol. And to me... I now recognize now that alcohol was a means of playing small and as a way of me hiding out in the audience of my life instead of being the star of my life. So I want to ask you, are you the star of your own life? Are you the main character? Are you the one that's going on the adventures and getting outside of your comfort zone and taking risks and doing creative pursuits and sharing your gifts with the world? And if you're not, why not? Is this something you'll regret when you're 90 years old, when you're looking back at what could have been in your life? I don't want you to die with any regrets, right? I don't want you to die with any regrets. And so, you know, sometimes we come to this, like with this energy of, yes, I wanna get in my purpose. I wanna share my gifts. I want to die with no regrets, but we don't know where to start. We have no idea what we really want. And it's so fascinating because I could go walk to a mall or a grocery store and ask the first 15 people I see, what do you want? And most people would have no idea. Most people are pretty good at knowing what they don't want because we have enough life experience to know what we don't want, but most people do not know what they want. And so as part of this challenge, you get this workbook, right? You get this workbook and day one, you have four questions that I want you to answer for homework because these questions are gonna really help mine your desires. And you know what's interesting is that we always have the opportunity to do this. Every single year is a next chapter that's unfolding in front of us. So maybe you were really in touch with your goals and dreams from four years ago, but now you're a different person. Now you've evolved. Now it's time to come to the plate and really reevaluate yet again what you truly want for this next phase of your life. So it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what you've already done in your life, these questions are going to be super pertinent to you because it's always about what you want now as you are growing, as this next chapter is unfolding in front of you. And especially if you've reevaluated the role of alcohol in your life recently or in the last like year or whatever, then you're like a totally different person. It totally behooves you to ask some of these deeper questions about what you actually want out of your life. And the thing is, is when it comes to, you know, sometimes asking these questions, our brain stops us. Our brain, the logical part of our brain, which actually I think is just fear, the logical, reasonable, practical part of our brain, which is really just fear, only wants us to do things that are safe only wants us to do things that, you know, are rewarded in our society because of what has worked before. And that's why so many of us find ourselves in jobs that do not fulfill us, that give us the paycheck, that is looks good on paper, that is, you know, the office, whatever, but it's not really what our soul's calling is for us. And so, you know, a lot of times we have to actually, you know, talk about the equation of money because money oftentimes traps us. It traps us into, I have to pay the bills, I have to pay the mortgage, I don't have time to just do what I want, right? And it's so true that in previous generations, that was really true, you know? There wasn't this question of what do I can do for fun? Our previous ancestors had to survive, right? And we've been brought up by our ancestors, and so we have the same mentality that, you know, what we do is just to survive, what we do is to get the paycheck, what we do is to pay the mortgage, all those things. So what if for just a second, just a moment, we took money off the table? What if we just had this proposition for you that no matter what you did, you would make a six-figure salary? No matter what, you could do anything and still make enough money. What would you want to do? 
And this is a really good question because it takes that, you know, that nagging, you know, I, I always wanted to be a writer, but let me tell you this. I also would tell myself, oh, well, there's no money in writing. Authors don't make money. And so I just didn't pursue it without actually even trying. And let me tell you, there is money in writing. I got a six figure book deal from Harper Collins, $125,000, right? There is money in anything that you do that is linked to your passions because of this beautiful world that is now available to us and there's so much more opportunity. So let's put that money equation to the side and just tell yourself, if I were to make a six figure salary, no matter what, what would you want to do? Right? That's question number one. The next question I want you to ask yourself is, you know, oftentimes our belief system stops us from actually figuring out what we really want because we don't believe we have what it takes to achieve it. So we just completely say like, well, yeah, it'd be nice to be like a public speaker or a motivational speaker and speak around the world and go to high schools and junior highs. But I don't actually believe I could do that. Right. So it's like we have the, the dream, the seed of the dream is there, but then we stop ourselves because we don't have enough self-belief. So my next question for you is if you knew that no matter what you would succeed, what would you want? No matter what, there's no failure, you would succeed no matter what, no matter what you did, you would be good at it and it would work out for you. What would you want? And these are just two of the questions that I want you to marinate on. There's more in your workbook. So be sure you crack open your workbook. You can open on your computer and actually type into it on your computer, or you can print it out, whatever feels good for you, or you can just take the questions and, you know, do them in your journal, but be sure to go over the workbook so you can dive deeper into these questions about what your soul came here to do. And I love these because it takes the realism that we often operate by so much fear, right? So much fear that I don't want to end up a, under a bridge. So I'm going to do the smart move. And we lead these unfulfilling lives because we're not stepping into our passion and to our purpose. And now don't get me wrong. Some people will do their passion and purpose as their career. And some people will do it on the side. And whatever is happens and, and whatever evolves for you is perfectly the right answer for you, you know? So it's not like I'm asking you to quit your job tomorrow. I'm asking you to connect with your deeper desires, your passions, and what lights you up. Because I promise you what lights you up is not only going to change and impact the world, it's also going to fulfill you. And most likely when you're leading this life and you're chasing opportunities that are, you know, the universe is presenting itself through this new path, I do believe that you are going to be abundant at it as well. I do believe you get to have it all, especially in this new society where there's so much more access to be able to share our gifts with the world. And so make sure you connect with those questions and go over the workbook and share the answers in the Facebook group, okay? Share any answers that you got, any ahas that you got with answering this question so that the more times you engage, the more times you answer questions, the more entries you get to win our beautiful giveaways. So now I would love to lead you through a little meditation. I call this my purpose meditation because it's going to connect you with some of the, you know, intuitive, soulful answers that only your heart can give you. Not your head, not your strategy, not your analytical mind, your heart, right? So I want you to take a moment to meditate with me now. And if you're driving, please stay safe. But if you're not driving, I want you to take a moment and close your eyes. I'm going to keep mine open as I'm leading the session, but I want you to go ahead and close your eyes, feel your feet flat on the ground, feel your sit bones supported in your seat, and take in a nice long deep breath in through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. Good. And again, I want you to take a nice long deep breath in through the nose. And exhale. Beautiful. Another light, long, deep breath in through the nose. And exhale. Good. And I want you to just continue gently breathing in through the nose, out through the nose, as you feel connected to the earth beneath you. This earth is spinning millions of miles in a universe where we have the perfect conditions to harbor human life. There's water, there's vegetation, there's the perfect atmosphere for us to breathe. 
And I just want you to feel grounded and supported by this beautiful paradise that we live on. That is clearly a heaven on earth when we look at any other planet around us. We live in heaven. We live in the Garden of Eden. And as you connect firmly with the planet Earth beneath you, I also want you to connect with your heart, your intuition, or source, whichever one feels best for you, knowing that you're going to be getting guidance from above as well. And I want you to just know as you're deeply breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth that you have a 1 in 14 trillion chance of being here. 1 in 14 trillion chance. The earth had to evolve the way it did, you know, the, the minerals and everything coming together to form a solid earth. And our earth used to be completely dry. And one day a meteor crashed on our planet and gave us hydrogen and oxygen so that we could have water. And water formed in our planets and, you know, little bacteria and little amoebas formed in the water. And all these things had to happen just the right way for you to be here today. The dinosaurs had to go extinct because we probably wouldn't have been able to survive with these carnivorous dinosaurs around us. Everything literally happened exactly how it had to happen for you to be here today. Did you know that just in the last 400 years, 4,000 of your ancestors had to survive to childbirth for you to be here today? You are literally the progeny of the strongest most courageous people on this planet. Every single one of your ancestors is a survivor and they are strong enough to live to get you to this point. 4,000 great grandmothers and great grandfathers supporting you for you to be here at this moment. So many chances of how which egg and which sperm to come together at your conception and you are now a 1 in 14 trillion chance of being here on this planet. It is by no accident that you are here. And as you take in a long, deep breath in through the nose, I just want you to recognize that you are here for a reason, that you are here for a purpose, that your life matters, and that you have a legacy and a part to play on this planet, and that you have reevaluated the role of alcohol in your life for a reason. And that reason is bringing you closer and closer into unleashing your deeper purpose. And I want you to place your hands on your heart and ask yourself, what did I come here to do? What did I come here to do? And allow the answers to unfold, allow your intuition to fill in the gaps Whatever your intuition says, just accept it with love. Who did I come here to be? Who did I come here to be? Allow your intuition to come up with the answers. Who did you come to this planet to be? What is my legacy? What am I meant for? What is my purpose? And what do I need to know in this moment to move forward into my beautiful purpose? You have a power. You have a fire inside of you. There's no one like you that has ever lived on this planet and no one will ever again. You have special gifts that only you can share with the world. You are meant to take center stage. You are meant to be the star of your own life. You are meant to be fulfilled and live out all your values and dreams. You were meant to reevaluate the role of alcohol in your life because the universe wanted you to let go of what no longer served you, what no longer would help you achieve your goals and dreams so that you could step into your bigger purpose. You were meant to unleash your AF fire. 
You have a fire inside of you that the world has yet to see. There are so many beautiful things you came here to this planet to do. And just for one more moment, I want you to reconnect with that deeper purpose, those deeper desires, those deeper longings. Connect to the essence of what it is you came here to do. It is sacred. Your dreams are sacred. Your desires are sacred. They came to you for a reason because you are the exact person who is meant to achieve them. Your desires will help the world. They will create ripple effects in ways that you can't even imagine right now. Breathe that in. Connect to that passion. Connect to that fire in your belly. Breathe it in and out. Good. And go ahead and open your eyes. And be sure to grab your workbook so you can jot down anything that came up for you in that meditation. Any kind of signal or sign or message that you got from your intuition. And I want you to start really honing in on your desires because I promise you they are sacred. I promise you that the things that you want is meant to uplift humanity and is meant to offer your special gifts and to change lives. You know, we have people that give permission to other people to live main character energy in their lives. And you, by following your deeper dreams, are literally changing families, communities, friendship circles, and so much more. It's such a big ripple effect. So I know sometimes it feels like what we want is selfish or, you know, just it doesn't actually help the world, but I promise you it really does. Reconnect right now with what you came here to this planet to do and go through your workbook tonight and answer all the questions in detail and then go in the Facebook group and pop some of those questions in or some of those answers into the Facebook group, okay? And I'll be supporting you. I'll be rallying you. I'll be cheering with you. So when we discover what we really want, what often happens, and I want you to watch out for this, is that there's part of our brain, the survival part of our brain, the instinctual part that just wants us to be safe, it automatically kicks in and tells us all the reasons why it's not possible, all the reasons why we can't do that, all the reasons why it's never going to work out. And so tomorrow, not only do we need to remove all those beliefs, I'm going to be sharing with you the latest cutting edge science from Dr. Bruce Lipton about why our consciousness creates reality and how we can actually change the programs in our brain that are not serving us. And it starts with becoming emboldened in your alcohol-free lifestyle. If you feel embarrassed, if you feel ashamed, if you feel awkward about telling people that you're not drinking tonight or you're not drinking, we need to get that confidence within you because that is only going to detract from your purpose. So come back tomorrow. I'm going to be sharing exactly how you can reprogram your brain to actually believe in your goals and dreams. The latest cutting edge science from Dr. Bruce Lipton, one of the pioneers of epigenetics and how our consciousness creates reality and more chances to win these incredible giveaways just by watching live, just by engaging, just by sharing your comments, just by being here and sharing all of your hearts and goals and dreams. This is a safe space. Your friends and family can't see anything here. Nobody can see what you're writing other than the members of the group. So feel free to go deep, go big, share your heart out. And I cannot wait for day three on Thursday. I'm going to be sharing with you the How to Attract Wealth Masterclass for free. So be sure to attend live. And if you're watching on the replay, I'm so glad you're here as well. You'll be getting replays on every single one of the days if you can't make it. But like I said, when you come live, there's a different energy and you also get to get more giveaway entries. I'm so excited you're here. It's so serendipitous that the universe connected it with us. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.